1976. I remember it like it was yesterday. Really, folks, I can't believe that more than four decades passed. It was a huge year for the United States. The Bicentennial, 200 years of independence. The entire nation partied, particularly as we got closer and closer to the 4th of July, Independence Day. I remember my dad taking us to see fireworks and then hitting the only McDonald's within 30 miles of us to get Big Macs for the very first time. We didn't go to McDonald's often back then, and although Big Macs were under a buck, my dad let us know that trips to fast food restaurants were saved for very special occasions, like a bicentennial. Although money was pretty tight back then, every couple of weeks my dad would give me an allowance. The amount would vary. Sometimes it would be a couple of bucks, but usually it was less than a dollar. Still, it was enough to hit the little market down the street and grab a Hershey's candy bar and a bottle of Coke. The store was run by a guy named Irv Cleverly, and the market was very cleverly named Irv's Market. Candy bars back then were only 15 cents, and if we would hurry and drink the bottle of Coke outside of the store and then go back in and give the bottle back to Irv, he'd only charge us a nickel for the soda. So even a buck could go pretty far back in the day. In 1976, the average American home cost about $45,000. I remember my mom talking on the phone to neighbors about what homes were selling for, and she didn't understand how anyone could handle a $300 a month house payment. Like I said, things were fairly tight in our home. In 1976, while Gerald Ford was the President of the United States, I was way more familiar with the Vice President, because my dad liked to say, who do you think I am, Nelson Rockefeller? As he went around the house turning off lights after us. Truthfully though, the lights weren't causing the electrical bill to go up. It had to be the TV set. Back then I was spending as much time as my parents would allow in front of the TV. ABC was my network of choice. They had Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley. And oh, I remember thinking that the Fonz was so cool. If only I could be like the Fonz or Vinnie Barbarino. And of course, there was the Six Million Dollar Man. I loved the episode from the 1976 TV season where Steve encountered Bigfoot for the first time. To this day, I get chills thinking about that epic battle in slow motion with all of those bionic sounds. And then there were the angels. Pharaoh was still around in 1976. One year later, in 77, Cheryl Ladd would take her place as her younger sister, Chris Monroe. But during the nation's birthday, we still had Farrah. One of the only shows that I would turn the dial for was MASH. It was on CBS. I ventured over there occasionally, but like I said, ABC was my bread and butter network. There were so many awesome shows. I haven't even mentioned great shows like Three's Company and Starsky and Hutch. And in movie theaters, Stallone's first Rocky motion picture was both a critical and box office success. Even today, when I think about this film, I immediately hear Bill Conti's amazing music in my head. Another movie that I really loved was Logan's Run. Back then, living until you were 30 didn't seem all that horrible. 30 was so old. Now I understand why Logan chose to run. The movie was good, but I do believe, as is often the case, the original novel by William F. Nolan and George Clayton Johnson was so much better. And on the radio, this song seemed to be getting far too much airplay. At first, I loved it and then I tolerated it, and then I'd switch stations whenever it came on. Fortunately, enough years have passed now that I enjoy listening to this energetic duet once again. Howard Hughes died in 1976. I remember hearing about it a little bit, but what I really remember is this guy, Melvin Dumar, a fellow Utah who claimed to have a copy of a last will and testament that gave him a whole heck of a lot of cash. I don't remember how things eventually shook out. Although I suspect that things didn't go well for Melvin. Oh well, at least he was one of the main characters in the movie Melvin and Howard. Hopefully Hollywood hooked him up with a little bit of cash for his troubles. As the year wound down, I began thinking about what I should put on my holiday wish list. And this is what I landed on. This action figure was so cool. You could look through Steve Austin's eye. You could peel back skin to see advanced circuitry. You can even activate Steve's bionic arm. Other cool things about 1976 worth noting 
It was the year that Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs sold their first Apple computer. I believe they assembled the thing in a garage. And Cy Sperling, well, he started the Hair Club for Men, giving hope to follically challenged fellers such as myself around the world. Truthfully, I never pulled the trigger on a wig. I just couldn't do it. But I'm glad that there are options out there for those folks who want them. Let's end here. Yep, that's a 1976 Oldsmobile Cutlass. We had one of those. I still remember the day my dad drove home in it after buying it without even talking to my mom. Let's just say she wasn't pleased. Ah, uh, the lessons you learn in this old life. The lesson I learned that day was that you keep learning lessons no matter how old you get to be. All right, now it's your turn. Please share your thoughts and your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I would appreciate a thumbs up and I would be absolutely honored if you considered subscribing to my YouTube channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.